This is the next video in my Encaustic Basics series, and today we're going to be talking about brushes. The main thing about brushes is that you must use natural bristle brushes when you're painting with encaustic because the synthetic synth because synthetic brushes will not stand up to the heat. <laughs> I gotta make sure I say that right. So natural bristle brushes, the good news is that you can find them everywhere and very cheaply. And there's there's different kinds. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is the different kinds of brushes that you can get that are natural bristled. We're gonna start off talking about chip brushes. Now these, I got at Michael's. I think they were a dollar a piece. And I actually just saw these today, these exact same brushes today at the dollar store. They're, they came in a pack of two for $1.25. So these br brushes are very, very cheap. And, and they're perfect. They're great for painting with encaustic. Uh, they stand up well to the heat. I haven't had any problems with them burning or anything. Natural bristles will still burn though. If you accidentally turn your griddle on too high or something like that, you will scorch them. So don't think that they're indestructible just because they're natural. But they, these are great. And uh, what I really like about these two, besides being inexpensive, is that they're a great width. They're perfect for laying down layers of wax as I'm starting a painting, like just kind of slapping it on. Most of the time I do my detail work with clay tools. Like I will carve into the wax if I want to add like a really sharp thin line. I will just use a clay tool and carve it in instead of trying to add details like that with a brush. Um, so most of my brushes are thick like this. You can get them smaller like this. I do have, there are natural bristle brushes you can get that look like this. These ones are not natural bristled. These ones are synthetic. So they're much more uniform you can tell. So these get used with acrylic and that kind of stuff. But there are natural bristle brushes you can get that look like this if you want to use um, smaller brushes to get more detail. But the thing about these brushes, both these kinds of brushes, is the metal. These metal bindings, when they are on top of your griddle for long periods of time, the metal starts to come undone and the pins will start to come out. So these do have a life expectancy. They, they don't last forever. Um, and how long they last probably depends on how often you're using them and how long they're staying on your griddle and all that kind of stuff. But these will come apart and the whole top will just come off. Now you can like re-glue it on there if you want to, which, which is fine. But that is the reason why these Haka brushes are more durable as far as that goes. You can see how they're they're not just nailed in. These have a metal binding that's just like nailed through. The Haka brushes are bound. So they're, I hope that you can see that. I'm trying to get as close to the camera as I can. But the Haka brushes are, they're wrapped and glued and then they're set in between here and they're, they're actually, it's like, these are, this is wire, but it's bound, it's like woven through each portion of the, so there's, this isn't coming apart. It's not gonna, no matter how long you leave it on your griddle, it's not gonna come apart. And, and these are one of the other things about the Haka brushes that makes them more expensive, but absolutely fabulous to use with your encaustic wax is they're so much softer than these, these super cheap brushes. So there are techniques that are much better for Haka brushes. If you want to get like a very smooth surface, a Haka brush is, is going to serve you better than a chip brush. If you want to do a technique like accretion, the softer brush brushes are much better for that as well. And you'll notice that as you start using them. But again, like when you're just starting out, if you're just starting to collect brushes, you're just learning caustic techniques, the chip brushes are perfect for that. And then as you get more experienced, you understand the basics of fusing and all that stuff, and you've mastered a few techniques, you can definitely go and upgrade to the Haka brushes and you'll, you'll notice the difference immediately. It will just kind of propel you to that next level in your encaustic art. So that's... Uh, 
there, I'm sure there's many other things I could talk about with brushes, uh, but those I think are the, the main points um, to consider when you're investing in some brushes and you're, you're just start, whether you're just starting out or whether you're trying to advance to another level or be super professional. Those are, I think, the main things to consider when you're, when you're selecting your brushes. If you have any other comments or, or if you have uh, a different experience, if you have some other tips for, for everybody watching the video, I would love to have you put them in the comments. Uh, I'm sure everybody else watching would love to have those tips in the comments too so that we get, you know, as educated as we can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.